Even royals aren't exempt from school. But you may be surprised at how far some of them got. Who knew the future king could balance his studies and a budding talent for dodging flying slippers? When a young Princess Elizabeth was growing up, her entire life was turned upside down by two cataclysmic events. The abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII, and World War II. The former put her in direct line to the British throne, and the latter endangered the entirety of Europe and forced Elizabeth into the countryside for safety. While evacuated at Windsor Castle, Elizabeth's education was carried on at the hands of tutors. Elizabeth was educated mostly at home, as schooling was still very male-dominated in the 1940s and 1950s. Still, her future role as queen heightened the level of importance within her education, and she spent much of her time with her father, King George VI, learning the ropes of the job. Princess Elizabeth, as she then was, took her cue from her father, from his sense of duty. Henry Martin, who was the then Vice Provost of Eton College, also tutored the then Princess, and she further received education from the Archbishop of Canterbury. Pursuing even more academic areas with a governess, the future Queen learned French in addition to her studies in politics and history, greatly setting her up for success as the monarch. Then Princess Elizabeth's younger sister, Princess Margaret, did not enjoy such educational privileges. In the BBC documentary, Princess Margaret, the Rebel Royal, Margaret's former lady-in-waiting, Lady Anne Glen Connor, said she believed her education was put on the back burner in order to serve Elizabeth wholeheartedly, saying, Princess Margaret always said, I was never educated as well as my sister in order not to be a sort of threat to her. That's what she felt. Glen Connor's estimations about Margaret's education were furthered by another lady-in-waiting, Jane Stevens, who highlighted just how aware where Margaret was of the lack of interest in her own educational pursuits. Stevens explained, She said to me, that was the first time I sort of thought or realized that my sister was going to be queen and I wouldn't really be a part of what she was going to do. It hit her quite hard that their lives were going to be completely different. To say that the late Prince Philip's life started in turmoil is a huge understatement. After his father was imprisoned and his uncle abdicated from the Greek throne, Philip was forced to evacuate the country. At just 18 months old, Philip was placed in a cot and put on the Royal Navy ship leaving Corfu. The prince excelled as a student despite the disruptions that plagued his early years, and he threw himself into life as an academic quite naturally. By the mid-1920s, Philip was living in France and started attending school there before moving to England and enrolling at Cheam Preparatory School in Surrey. By the age of 12, he was on the move again to Germany, where he studied under academic Kurt Hahn at Salem School. So it's a bit revolutionary to have Charles go to a school like Cheam and eventually to Gordonston, the school that his father went to. Shortly thereafter, Philip attended the Gordonston School, where he excelled in sailing and became the captain of the hockey and cricket teams, as well as the head boy. A famously shy child who expressed far more emotion than his father seemingly cared for, King Charles III attended boarding school at the age of 13, something that was out of the norm for heirs, as they were typically taught by private tutors. However, Charles faced constant bullying that defined his experience at Gordonston. According to Reuters, writer William Boyd attended Gordonston at the same time as Charles, and further expressed that the now king saw his time at boarding school as akin to imprisonment. Charles's experience at boarding school was further discussed by Jonathan Dimbleby, who wrote an extensive biography of Charles entitled the Prince of Wales, a biography. Dimbleby outlined how the bullying shaped the man that Charles would become, writing that Charles insisted that his time there instilled a sense of self-discipline and responsibility. But he also recalls the young prince's account of the bullying, writing, The people in my dormitory are foul. They throw slippers all night long or hit me with pillows. I still wish I could come home. Though her brother faced an awful amount of torment while at boarding school, his sister, Princess Anne, thrived in the environment. I did volunteer to go to school, I have to say, and I was thrilled. School was much more interesting. <laughs> 
man attended the Benenden School located in Kent and now serves as the president of the Benenden School Society. She spoke about her experience as a boarder during an extensive interview with Vanity Fair, highlighting the differences between her education and Charles's. She admitted, I was ready to go to school. I had a governess and two friends and that was never going to be enough really, so I was only too pleased to be sent off somewhere else. Anne went on to speak in favour of boarding school, insisting that it helps some students thrive and saying, One of the other charities I got involved with was the Royal National Children's Springboard Foundation and takes children from chaotic homes and sends them to boarding schools. You only have to listen to them to realise that it's absolutely transformed their lives. For Andrew's schooling experience, he followed a relatively similar path of ending his educational career at a boarding school, while also expanding his education beyond Great Britain. Like his siblings, Andrew was largely educated by a tutor as a young child growing up at Buckingham Palace, but after attending primary school, he enrolled at Gordonston. How his path differed, however, was that he also spent time abroad, attending Lakefield College School in Ontario, Canada, before his schooling time was up. Taking things one step further than his father and older brother, Andrew then enrolled at the Britannia Royal Naval College in 1979, starting his career as an officer in the Royal Navy. Once that portion of his school was complete, Andrew completed pilot's training and capped off his complete schooling in 1981 when he earned his pilot's wings. Of course, Andrew had his military titles stripped due to the ongoing scandal involving him and his friendship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Like his father and two older brothers, Prince Edward enrolled at Gordonston School and boarded there as a teen before furthering his education at Jesus College at Cambridge. Edward studied history while at the school and later pursued a career in the armed forces. Instead of the Royal Navy like his brother and father before him, Edward chose the Royal Marines and maintained his commission until 1987 before making the decision to retire. Though his education followed a similar path to what his brothers and father had done before him, Edward pursued a number of professional interests given that his role as a member of the royal family was of lesser magnitude than King Charles III. Studying under famed composer Andrew Lloyd Webber, Edward went on to work in the theatre community and set up his own production company in the late 1980s. After that venture left Edward about $1 million in debt, he then made strides toward the film industry and his role in the royal family today has expanded. Prince William, the now Prince of Wales, has had an impressive educational path and has gone farther than most of his family members, no doubt due to his role as the now direct heir to the throne. His mother, the late Princess Diana, was adamant that William had as normal of a schooling experience as possible, so he was enrolled at the Weatherby School in London as a young student. After his time there was over, William enrolled at the Ludgrove School in Berkshire and was there for five years before attending the prestigious Eton College. Famously, William then enrolled at the University of St Andrews in Scotland in the early 2000s. While there, he studied geography and art history before spending a year traveling and working for charities that his mother aligned herself with during her lifetime. After graduating in 2005, William took things one step further and enrolled in the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Though he did not serve foreign tours during his time in the military, William completed Armed Forces Service as an RAF Search and Rescue Force Officer and later trained as a helicopter pilot. Uh, doing a job like this is worthwhile, valuable. Unsurprisingly, Prince Harry's educational path looks quite similar to that of his older brother, Prince William. Like William, Harry was a student at a number of private schools before attending Eton College. After studying there and graduating in 2003, Harry decided to travel and work rather than expand his schooling, which led him to Argentina, Africa and Australia. During this period of his life, Harry spent the bulk of his time working at an orphanage in Lesotho, a meaningful connection in his life that he has maintained to this day. Afterwards, Harry decided to pursue a career in the military and enrolled at Sandhurst, graduating in May 2005 and becoming an officer in April 2006. 
When he did so, British military officials made their hesitations clear about him serving overseas. Given Harry and William's heightened profiles as members of the royal family, military leaders were concerned that their presence in overseas territories would put their fellow service members at risk. Though William took this to heart and contained his service to Great Britain, Harry went on to serve two tours in Afghanistan. Camilla, Queen Consort, had a more limited educational experience, being the young, female child of an aristocratic family. Camilla's family was an upper-class, well-to-do bunch, and Camilla spent most of her childhood at the family's country estate, located in East Sussex. It was there that she discovered her love of equestrian-related sports and all things outdoors, two passions that have carried on to this day. After spending time at the estate, Camilla attended the Queen's Gate School located in London, but her role as an up-and-coming lady put a bit of a wrench in her academic pursuits. After Queen's Gate School, Camilla's family sent her to Switzerland, where she attended finishing school, the poshest education about how to be a lady. From there, she went to the University of London Institute, located in Paris, before returning to Great Britain. In 1965, she was presented to society as a debutante, and her life as an upper-class girl ready to get married officially took off. Camilla later worked as a receptionist while indulging in the London social scene before getting married to her first husband, Andrew Parker Bowles. Times, thankfully, have changed since the daughters of upper-class families have been seen for their potential as wives rather than academic thinkers themselves, and Princess Catherine is a great example of this. Due to her parents' successful business and heightened roles within their community, Catherine attended prep school and later Marlborough College located in Wiltshire, England. While at Marlborough, Catherine excelled both academically and athletically, becoming the captain of the field hockey team and establishing herself as a very secure student. After completing her time at Marlborough, Catherine went on to apply and be accepted to the University of St Andrews. There, she studied art history and just so happened to meet a fellow art history student, Prince William. The two lived together as friends before taking their relationship to the next level. And, of course, the rest is history. After leaving St Andrews, Catherine worked in the fashion industry as well as for her parents' company, while also establishing herself with a number of charities. Her non-profit work has continued tenfold, as her time in the royal family has grown and her role expanded. As the royal family continues to grow, much attention has been paid to the education that Prince William and Princess Catherine are affording their three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. When he was younger, George was enrolled at St Thomas's School in Battersea, as the family was living at London's Kensington Palace at the time. As their children grew, the couple expressed their desire to give them as normal of a childhood as possible, and William and Catherine relocated to Windsor and enrolled their children at the Lambrook School. As for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, their schooling in the United States has yet to be established, given their young ages. 